before we go into today's video, look what's sold. <laughs> Grumpy Granny will be uh, more than pleased because uh, she didn't tell me I'd ever sell that. I think I paid $3 from the op shop, if I remember correctly. Um, it's on the bottom of the label there. You can actually have a look. But today we're actually going to talk about um, a little hack that I, that I think I've stumbled upon, actually. Um, so basically, the octopus does send his regards. He doesn't like coming out after dark because last time he was after dark, he... Um, must set himself on fire, actually. So, <laughs> so he doesn't he doesn't like coming out after dark because there's a bit of candles around, and he's quite averse to those. So today we're actually um, we're going to talk about what I've actually stumbled across. I don't I haven't really heard many other people speaking about it, so I don't know if it's out there. Um, it's something that I, I stumbled across accidentally. I have you know listening to other videos and other YouTubers talk. They have what well, I suppose contributed to to the idea when i'm going to present this video um if you are after quick sales like you know this thing is probably a more of a longer game um it's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass and like i said that yeah you know, it, it works for me and I, I you know i will show you my graphs somewhere <laughs> they'll pop up the top but basically if you are after a quick fix uh, for your account probably the nuclear reset like it still seems to work i hear a lot of people talking about it uh seems to be working from their perspective so the nuclear reset um i will probably put a link to one of the videos if i can work out how to do it uh we talked about it before so primo chemo um and hay for cells jeff uh so basically they're talking about it a little bit last year uh blake green and myself were doing that on probably not a daily basis i think it was every couple of days we're doing that uh it's a nuclear reset is basically when you end and sell similar to your whole store. So uh, at the moment, I've got about 950 items in my store. So you would basically cancel all those out, end them, sell similar. Then obviously you get the new algorithm boost for all those different things. So if your your store's a little bit stagnated, you could probably try that, but that's not what we're going to be talking about today. So basically what I want to talk about is that I stumbled across a bit of a anomaly. Um, so I've been just playing around with shorts, right? So I've been doing a little different things just to annoy people <laughs> from that perspective. Um, and what I was doing is basically I was doing shorts about Skylanders, right? So this little guy, if you ever, this is swap for. So if you ever see these guys or my beloved octopus here, don't pick them up. <laughs> they are so in, in abundance, uh, you, you'll end up losing money. But So basically... Uh, I was doing shorts about these guys, uh, doing shorts about how expensive they are, um, and then basically, you yeah, know, what I like to look at, you know, all these different things from that different perspectives and all these different things, right? So what I was finding is that when I was launching the shorts, they were getting, you know, some traction, and they're not going viral by any means, right? They were grabbing traction in the United States. Um, and what I would find is that if I followed the graph, and I'll put the graph up here somewhere so you can carry along as well, so the way the YouTube short would do, uh, it would probably in the first hour, it would probably do 10 or 15 views. Then 3 o'clock my time in the morning, so 3 a.m., I don't know what that correlates with in the U.S., but the short would just go vertical and probably hit about 1,000 views within the space of an hour. Um, what I would find after that is because, like I said before, you're trying to build a relatable brand, right? So basically, um, <clears throat> then I'll probably put up a, a listing of one of my Skylander listings here just to go show you what I mean, is that I always put my eBay store on, you know, on, on everything. I'm quite transparent in that respect. So I'm like making thousands and thousands of dollars, you, get, you buy all my gear through my eBay store and see what I'm selling. But you need to build yourself a brand. And what I'm finding when the shorts were, they're taking off, then some reason and i didn't click this for a couple of shorts it was actually i was generating a lot of skylander sales when i woke up probably the following 24 hours so what was happening is that there was a correlation between my shorts uh for yeah just talking about these guys you know nothing in particular um then literally 24 hours later i was having a, a, a metric ton sales of skylanders and the way that i've got them set up and this is what i normally tell everyone whoever reaches out to me <laughs> or whoever will listen in that respect is that do them in variation listings do them by theme so this one's like swap force the little blue base um you've also got your you know, your red bases and all these different things so these ones here would be in their own variation listings themselves. And what I was finding is that, um, you know, like I was saying, that, you know, people would buy 15, 10, 15, you know, 20 Skylanders at a hit and they'd all go shipped overseas. And people were paying absorbent amounts of money for, for postage. They're paying like $150 Australian for some reason. Um, these, you know, 10 of these, 15 of these, probably be about a pound and a half. So what I was doing is I was 
bringing that postage back down, just refunding them, just obviously the excess. Um, and then, you know, I just didn't think much of it. Then all of a sudden, I did another short. Um, I did a short on Robo, which was basically that $500 Skylander that I found twice <laughs> in my Skylander duty. Um, so I did on a short and those different things. And the same thing happened again. Like, you know, I had three people reach out to me asking me, you know, do I ship to America? Do I ship overseas? And all these different things. Um, and how quickly they could have it. And that was literally two or three days after the Robo short came out. He did a little bit better. He went to the two and a half thousand views. So what I think is that, from my experience, and this is what I've been doing over a prolonged period of time, like I have actually researched for a, for a change instead of just shooting off at the mouth, is that when when you do a short, um, you know, what I'm finding myself is when I do a short, the algorithms, to my knowledge and from my understanding of YouTube, is actually pushing out that that short, not to resellers, which was what I was, my intended target was when I released the video. Um, it was actually pushing out to people that actually want that niche. They're actually skyling the people, right? So because I've got a, such a... I suppose, <laughs> somewhat of a brand per se, and identify my Skylander listings. It was people are actually looking for them and having them shipped across. And, you know, and I, I suppose to further solidify my theory in this respect as well, I actually had a few comments on my, like my order history and stuff like this. It's like, you know, like I've seen you on TikTok or I've seen you on YouTube shorts and all these different things. Not many, like, like I said, I do get a fair lot of Skylander sales, but what I was finding is that, that it almost come in waves, like, I would sell probably, yeah, just say hypothetically, I sell 10 bundles of Skylanders a week. There's probably more than that. But what I was finding is that if that was the average, 24 hours, 48 hours after launching a short, with, you can find that little graph that I put on the um, the thumbnail of this video, which is actually my, my graph, right, is that I would get you know, 10, 15 sales in that 48-hour period. So basically pushing it all from that perspective. So what I want to talk about today and I'm quite confident of the time because <laughs> I'm losing my voice again still, is that what I want you to do and what you want to look at from that perspective is actually create, you know, YouTube shorts, uh, TikTok videos, and all these different things, um, you know, to support your brand. So basically, I think a lot of the resellers in what I view on YouTube and all these different things, I'm not going to say egotistical, but they kind of make their shorts targeted towards resellers, right? So... Yeah, like they might walk into a thrift store, or they might walk into an op shop, and they'll start picking off things off the off the shelf and all these different things, and tell you what they're worth and all those different things. That's well and good, but that's not actually your target audience because you know <laughs> what I found is that resellers are quite tight. You know, like um, yeah, some of these characters are selling for sixty, seventy dollars, and I will bounce them up at the screen, all these different things, and show you what I mean. Uh, and if you see plus twenty one dollars or plus all those different things, that's actually an international sale, right? So my Skylanders, I think I charge nine ninety nine plus post. Yeah, like. Yeah, the nine ninety nine postage. So if it's anything other than nine ninety nine, it's gone overseas. So you'll have some things bouncing around the top. So what you know, going back to what I was saying is that yeah, these YouTube shorts are being pushed out to you know, to to resellers and all those different things, which is good in itself. You know, like you your niche and all those different things. So yeah, you know, like to me, that's more of like a, a power play or you know more of an ego thing opposed to actually showing people how to you know what to pick out and what all those different things are yeah but each of their own all those different things but now i suppose from my perspective is my dynamics shift away from you know trying to <laughs> having a pissing contest with other youtubers and other resellers and what i'm finding is actually i suppose molding my shorts to the target audience or the target avatar so you know i suppose from my perspective is that I do a lot of Skylanders, you know, I tell everyone about that all the time. But what I need to find out is what what demographic, um, you know, are buying Skylanders. Yeah, you know, and Skylanders came out to say hypothetically 10 years ago. Um, the medium age might have been between, to say, 8 to 13, 14, 15, around that period. So now we're looking, you know, 23 to 28 or something along the lines of that period. And that's what I'm finding a lot of these people are buying from. They're not actually, you know, they're not parents buying for their kids because, yeah, you know, we're, we're talking about Wii's, we're talking about PlayStation 3's and all those different things. They're actually those people that, you know, probably didn't have that character when they were a kid. They wanted that character, they collect them. Um, you know, they want to basically collect that set or, you know, collect the characters that, the characters that they don't have or they've revisited the game with their kids, all these different reasons, right? But what I'm finding is that, you know, they're coming through and, you know, YouTube is pretty much, you know, paying me to advertise to them. Like, you know, for YouTube shorts, right? Like, <laughs> you're not making, a, you know, obscene amounts of money. I think my probably one of my biggest YouTube shorts is probably about 10, 12,000. And you're probably getting about 25, 30 cents per 1,000 views. So, look, you're not making <laughs> exorbitant amounts of money, right? But 
you're not paying promotion fees, um, offside promotion ads, and all these different things to eBay. So basically, you're bringing in an organic audience um, to buy your product. And as a side effect, you know, YouTube's throwing you a couple of cents uh, to do all those different things. So, but like I was saying, is that you know you need to if you want to go down this path. Like I said, it's a bit of bit of a troll uh, from that perspective. And you know, if you want to go down that path, you need to basically play the long game from all these different things. Because, you know, if you go into TikTok, you go into YouTube shorts and all these different things, you have those, you know, 20 something year olds selling you, you know, beauty products or drink bottles and all these different things. And, you know, they've got thousands and thousands of likes and comments and all these different things. So what I'm proposing, um, and you're more than welcome to jump in as well, you know, like it might help your business. Uh, it might be able to lower your promotion rate from this perspective as well, is that if you have a replenishable stock, what you want to do is basically, you know, create some sort of mechanism to, to, to push that out there, right? So from YouTube Shorts, uh, create a YouTube channel. Uh, from a TikTok perspective, you can do Facebook, you can do Instagram, and all these different things. Anything you need to probably look at it from a perspective is that what's your target audience using? Uh, so like Skylanders, like I said, probably 13 to 28, um, or yeah, might even be 18 to 28, part of that demographic. They're probably using TikTok, right? So yeah, that's probably the platform that I would launch them on and try and scoop them in from there. So I've had a video in the last couple of days and it was the worst video I've ever filmed. <laughs> Literally took me 15 seconds to to put together. So I just found some t-shirts at the thrift store, uh, you know, stitched two bits of video together, a little voiceover that took me one take. Um, and that's got about 40,000, 45,000 views on TikTok. So like I said, it doesn't need to be elaborate, right? Um, <clears throat> I was watching Roman, the Anytime Picker, and Lisa. Hey, Lisa, hopefully you're watching this. Uh, so basically watching them on the weekend. They had Johnny. Uh, I want to say the Cajun Roots reseller, but <laughs> hopefully I'm close. Um, and he was talking about basically a very similar topic to what this was. And this has actually gave me some more credence into this theory, and this is what kind of drove this video, is that <sighs> so what he was saying is that you don't need to put your face in front of a camera, right? Like it is quite daunting to talk to a camera. You know, we're not all photogenic or, um, you know, easy to, you know, to talk to in front of a camera. But it does get easier. <laughs> I'm not very good at it, but it does get easier. Um, so what, what, what Johnny was saying is that, you know, you see a lot of faceless channels, you know, the, you know and I will put a video up here. I lose my hands. Put a video up here of the short that I actually did on Robo, right? So this this character here went for $500 Australia. So that, say, 375 American plus postage over to America. Um, at no point do you see my body, right? You only see my hands, and I move the character around like this, as you can probably watch it when we're going and talking along that. So you need to be mindful of the fact is that, you don't need to talk in, the, you don't need to present your face in these different things. You need to find something that that demographic wants. So, you know, and it has to be replenishable. Like, yeah, from my perspective, um, I find, like I've said numerous times before, I find a lot of player issue, um, rugby union gear, like Wallabies gear in where I am in Canberra. But the problem is though, I can't find enough of it to be replenishable. So I'm not going to spend time doing a TikTok video um, just to sell one pair of pants. So it just doesn't make sense to me, right? However, if you're selling books, you're selling DVDs, it might be a case of doing a book review, it might be a case of doing a DVD review, something along the lines of that. Um, I think I did a sh very abysmal short the other day regarding uh, Sega Saturn games, right? So these are, I picked up 75, these are trashed cases, I have to replace the cases, but so I picked up 75 Sega Saturn games for, Sega Saturn J Japanese games for 300 bucks. They worked out to be $4 a piece. Then I bought a Japanese Sega Saturn for 200 bucks, so it worked out to be $6 a piece, right? So what I'm going to do with these cases, because, yeah, you know, these games actually, because they're notoriously slow sell-through, I'm actually going to launch a new TikTok series uh, and probably more of a YouTube series, because I, I think YouTube shorts would be the demographic to uh, market, you know, Sega Saturn games too, because just by virtue of when they came out. Um, and that demographic will be a higher one. YouTube shorts, I find, gives you a more demographic. So I think last time my shorts were about 40 or 50% in the United States, um, and they had it even spread across very, like from that 13 to 18 plus all the way up to about 45 to around my age. So the Sega Saturn ones would be, you know, better suited on on uh, YouTube shorts opposed to TikTok from that perspective, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to exploit <laughs> my eldest that's going to Japan for a, for a holiday. Um, so what I'm going to do every every day or every couple of days, I might do a video. So basically, I'll show her, let her look, look at the case. You know, she's not going to be able to read the writing, right? <laughs> she's not, not competent in Japanese in any capacity. But, you know, she 
have a look at them and say, hey, well, look, you know, from looking at this case, I think that's a basketball game, right? So you should look around and go from that perspective. Then what I'll do is I'll say, hey, look, yeah, if you get it right, I'll give you 100 yen, which is about $10 Australian. Um, then what I'll do is then, the, yeah, the next video, I'll do another take where I actually chuck it in the Sega set and we can actually find out what it is. So, you know, <laughs> exploiting your children. I don't think there's any YouTubers on, on YouTube that do that. But so basically, like I said, it is created those different videos. And we've got 75, you know, Sega Saturn games that I've got floating around. Um, yeah, that's potentially two videos between those each. Um, obviously, one for asking her what to do and one from that different perspective, obviously showing it. So what I will do from that perspective is I'll actually drop my eBay store in or I'll put a little end screen saying, hey, look, you know, if you want this game, redirect it from this perspective and push it back to you know, my eBay store and have that funnel effect. It's obviously the, these different things. Um, it's going to be some traction issues in respect to that. So I will find that you're probably the first couple of videos will pr do quite poorly. Um, then obviously just the, yeah, very similar to, uh, to eBay from that perspective with YouTube is that consistency, you know, will just obviously go, you know, better and better as you go through the series. So that's my theory on that. Um, but I want to talk a bit, little bit about, <laughs> I had a run in with Facebook Marketplace tonight. So oh, my left hand, there we go. So I have a look at this, uh, this, PlayStation 3, right? So this is the original fat console that has backwards compatibility with PlayStation 2 games. Sell about $600 on eBay Australia uh, with free postage and all this sort of thing. So this lady wanted $300. I offered her $250. She came back with this little bit, little text there saying that, you know, she had it appraised by a PlayStation reseller or something like this and it's worth $300. So I went back to her and said, hey, look, uh, yeah, I'm happy to give you $300 but just by virtue of that I could use the console to test, take some photos. And the ones that are currently available on YouTube, on eBay, they aren't presented well. So, yeah, obviously, the reason why I can sell my products a little bit higher, and I don't recommend this for everyone, is by virtue of my feedback and also by virtue of the photos. The photos tell a story, right? So, you know, if I had this thing set up, like a lot of the ones that I see on, 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 face, on, on eBay that are on there at the moment, don't have any photos of them working they're not hooked up they're not showing your playstation 2 game on the on the tv and all those different things so i would do that this is for 600 dollars and all those different things but i would have that console um just testing games because yeah, i can get rid of my playstation 2 and all the different ones because it does playstation 1 2 and 3 at the same time so until that's sold anyway so i went back to her and said hey look i'm interested at 300 dollars however you know do you have photos of it working because you know i'm not driving out 20 30 minutes to go pick up this PlayStation 3 and it's not working. Uh, but yeah, and she turned around and said, no, photo, uh, no, but yeah, you're more than welcome to yeah, bring it back if you know, if it doesn't work. And going back to what, you know, you know, Grams and Pops Vintage, you know, talked about a couple of weeks ago with their fake Transformers is that the way things work in Australia is called by, um, caveat emptor, right? So basically it's buyer beware. So she could theoretically turn around and say, hey, look, you know, no, yeah, yeah, you, you're taking the the product off the property, no returns kind of thing. Yeah, you could take it to court. Yes, it's contract law in the sense that, you know, she has said that, you know, yeah, she is willing to accept returns and she's gone back on a word and those conditions of sales so all those different things. It becomes really, really complicated over $300 and all those different things. So I elected not to take the, <laughs> the punt on it. So um, but let me know in the comment section below, what would you actually do? Like, yeah, would you go over there and all these different things? Because... On my stance is, and yeah, this might be popular <laughs> within the, the community, is that if you're selling something for three hundred dollars, that at least prove that it's working, or at least have the audacity to say, "Hey, look, you know, I'll give me five minutes and I'll plug it in, and yeah, you know, and I'll show you it's working." All those different things. So, um, yeah, like I said, she's lost herself from that perspective. It's kind of like thrift stores around here. That I was talking to Anthony Dragon Master Finds a couple of weeks ago. And about his thrift stores, you know, and how he can actually plug things in and test them out before he buys them. We, a lot of the places I go to, we don't have that luxury. I, I bought a couple of things on the weekend and, you know, they marked them up to $10 a piece, uh, which is about $7 American. And they were missing pieces and they weren't working. So I bought the Atmosphere board game. Um, it was missing pieces. <laughs> I couldn't take that back because, you know, Vinny's likes selling, selling as is. So I think our thrift stores, you know, if you are, you know, commanding that price and I'm happy to, you know, pay that price. If it's can yeah, if it's checked, don't just start throwing prices on it because eBay listings are this without doing the work. 
So that's my bugbear of the week. <laughs> uh, we do have a video, uh, a question. So Matt's asked us a question. How much time left do we have to sell physical media before it's not feasible or there's no customers? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that Uncle Wayne would contest this, but I, I kind of think to myself that, yeah, you need to look at the cost of living crisis, right? So from my perspective and part of the reason why i've moved away from bigger collectibles like you know like funko pops other than the market falling out from underneath it is that rental prices especially where i am you know we're, we're creeping out to about 750 a thousand dollars a week in rent which is quite unachievable for a lot of people here so what i'm finding is a you know speaking to people in this you know around where i am at work is that people are like moving into shared house arrangements so they no longer have, you know, one family per a house, or they no longer have one person per a house, all these different things. So the storage is, you know, quite a commodity from that perspective. So no longer do they have a whole house to display their items. They've got a bedroom, right? So they're obviously their, their, their space is limited in that respect. So you need to be mindful of that before we actually take that into consideration. So physical media will always be around some capacity. Um, Matt was pretty much asking about... Yeah, DVDs, I think from that perspective, I personally, I wouldn't buy DVDs. Yeah, that's my stance. Uh, I know everyone's got a different opinion. Um, yeah, I find like it's kind of like books as well. Like, you know, I'm quite a, against books, but I suppose from my perspective is that I won't turn something down or sell. You know, there's, I won't, <laughs> if I see something there that, um, you know, it's a very hard to find DVD or it goes for a couple of hundred dollars um, or I will put up a, another comp for a DVD I sold the other day I think I sold it for forty dollars plus post. I paid two dollars at the op shop a couple of weeks ago for it. Um, yeah, stuff like that. I won't pass by. But I'm not going to go out and buy a warehouse full of books or a warehouse full of DVDs um, because you know ninety nine percent of them are trash. Because you know, like you know, it is a volume game and it's all these different things. But I suppose you need to look at down the road. What will happen is that when you're looking to wrap up your business, you're looking to sell your business, all these different things. What how are you going to move that stock? You know, like if you have to liquidate all these different things. So I, I suppose that, you know, it's probably better to be a, more of a choosy seller from that perspective. And on a, a side note, before I forget, I actually put a um, read on Facebook marketplace, uh, sorry, a Facebook group yesterday regarding below standard. Um, and I reached out and I said, I said, look, you know, what's the metrics and all these different things. About three or four other people popped back up on the, <laughs> on the, um, on the thread as well. And they're all below standard as well. So it is quite, daunting to see that people are falling below standard um i redirected them into the video i did a couple of weeks ago with j-ride flips or about from reacting to j-ride flips about his video just to say hey look this is what it is and a lot of these people didn't even actually know they're below standard so be mindful if you are a new reseller uh, keep an eye on your metrics these yeah these three people i, I dare say they probably won't be on ebay for very much longer um if they're not aware of uh they're below standard they're probably going to complain in the next couple of weeks that they're getting no sales then they'll eventually give it up so do 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 keep an eye on below standard uh thank you everyone for your support with last week's video blake has got his depop account back so we're happy in that respect a little bit like church services at the moment <laughs> just rattling through all these different things um and also i don't know i think i think that's it for us for another week actually um Grumpy Granny has, I spoke to her last week. Uh, she is getting better, so hopefully she'll be back soon. Um, by all means, yeah, feel free to probably reach out to her and harass her, and make sure she's going well. Um, but other than that, uh, we'll wrap it up there. I think actually, yeah, I think that's it for us for another week. <laughs> I have to find a, um, a way to say goodbye because it's getting me creepy when I go, bye. Anyway, we'll see you next time.